Hi, everyone. Absolutely delighted to welcome you to our call tonight, Unlocking Your, your Million Dollar Mindset. And yes, 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 everyone, without exception, is born with a millionaire gene. And, and our job on these call, calls is to peel the onion, if you will, to get to the root of what it takes for you to live your dream. And um, I haven't done this before, but I think I'm going to because there's so many new people that are joining us, and they may not know our story. And I think it's important to realize that in the profession of network marketing, multi-level marketing, direct sales, whatever you want to call it, we all have a story. And this is a photograph that we actually took recently on the Zalo One cruise. And uh, just delighted that we didn't pay for it. Zango actually paid for it with credits they gave us on the cruise, which was pretty cool. I was able to also do some shopping with their money. But um, Eddie and I will be actually celebrating a birthday in September that's probably more years than most of you are old. I know it's hard to believe because we don't look like we're in our 70s. Uh, most people think we're in our 50s, but there's a reason that we both look and perform younger today than we did when we joined Zango 12 years ago. But to give you a Reader's Digest for those who are not familiar with our story, uh, our story is not the typical story. We actually went from riches to rags and back again. Uh, as a result of selling our businesses to a group of private investors who defaulted and did not pay us, we ended up in an eight-year multi-million dollar lawsuit. Eight years of a downward spiral. And even though eight years later we won in court, the only winners were the attorneys. So we were dead right, dead broke, and over $450,000 in debt. So let me ask you this. If you were 52 and woke up one day and everything was gone, I mean, your world was upside down. You could not pay the phone bill and the electric bill at the end of the month. And the only reason they didn't shut off our electric is that we were taking care of my mother with breast cancer and Alzheimer's and she was on life support. So what would you do at the age of 52 and $450,000 in debt? And no rich relative who was going to die quickly would leave us millions. And someone reintroduced us to network marketing. And even though I promised Ed I would never look at it again, my sweetheart never stopped me from trying because I really believed that that's not how life was supposed to be. I really believed that we are not born to struggle. And I was determined to figure it out, even though for about three years I was a total failure. So how did I accomplish what some of you might think is just extraordinary results? How did we do this? Because I and Ed worked hard on ourselves, and we unlocked that million-dollar mindset that we had at one point that we lost because we didn't have a hope to ever get it back. But we decided that's what we were going to do. And that's really the purpose of our call. So imagine there's a cash box in your living room. And if you can open that combination, you will have a life that most people only dream about. So how are you going to unlock that combination? How are you going to figure it out? The answer is really simple. You need to unlock your million-dollar mindset. And you do that by working on yourself, your personal, your professional skills to peel away that, that sub conscious mind that is filled with all the negativity and all the garbage of the past, you are going to become a brand new person. And please understand, these calls are not intended as a lecture. They're supposed to be interactive. That's how you learn. You learn by doing. 
And our first um, co-host tonight is Mac- Mahala, Mahala, I, Mahala, I'm sorry, Mahala, I, I have such trouble with pronouncing your name, but she is as beautiful on the outside as she is on the inside. And I want to tell you a little bit about Mahala because she, she was really, really hesitant to join us. You know, so she is overcoming two things we talked about last month, fear and doubt. And that's how you grow. You grow by doing things that make you uncomfortable. And Mihela has a very interesting background. Um, She's got a master's degree in food science. Isn't that interesting? And um, she actually immigrated from Romania. And we met... um, several years ago at a Zango convention. And I think at the point at when she was there, she was what I refer to as a no K. She hadn't done anything yet, but she intuitively was smart enough to know you have to show up to grow. And she went from just a huge responsibility of managing seven companies in food manufacturing. And just a few years ago, went to a home party and met somebody who introduced her to Zango. And for a year, quite honestly, she just enjoyed the products and the incredible improvement in her health. And then when we met, she decided that she was going to commit to building a business and committing to her both personal and professional growth. So she is with us, and I've asked her to share some thoughts on what she got out of Brian Trace's um, session on making quantum leaps in your business career. So are you with us, Mihaela? Yes. Can you hear me? Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Now, pronounce your name for me again because I know I, I tried to practice before the call and I destroyed it, so I apologize. Don't worry. Mikaela is good. <laughs> Micaela, thank you, dear. So share with, share with everyone, you know, what impressed you the most? And that's a magical question. What impressed you the most is what I ask everybody, whether they watch a video, whether they attend a meeting. Um, it's always what impressed you the most. So I'll shut up and you share. Okay. <clears throat> Good evening, everybody. Um, all the time, I was impressed by Brian Tracy's seminars in the way he is classifying on each subject all the bullet points to make an order in your thinking and be more organized and analyze yourself in each situation and what you need to improve and to accelerate your success in your career. Uh, after one year and a half years being part of the mastermind group, that Sandy started to organize it in the purpose to accelerate our learning curve. We started modeling our skills, reading, and studying about the master of this industry and learn from their experience. I believe education and skills combined with the positive attitude, a good first impression, honesty, and self-discipline will open complex doors for us. In our learning, we have changed the way we are thinking about ourselves and to be open to new possibilities. We are improving all the time and change our thoughts in the same time, and we become a force energy and attract in our lives all types of people and circumstances that are starting to occur faster than we can imagine. What I want to highlight from all the 10 things that uh, Brian Tracy bullet point for to be a success, successful in this business is your self-discipline. Can I talk something about? Sandy? Yes, dear. Yes. I, you know, you said the magic word, Michaela, self-discipline. Oh, my goodness. If people really understood the possibilities... And I challenge everyone to go to my favorite friend and hopefully yours, Mr. Google, and type in what is the definition of self-discipline. I mean, I think that could be the secret to success. And I know 
Michaela, you were a little nervous, but you did great. Everybody in the chat book box, tell Michaela how well she did. Her first time stepping out of her comfort zone, and hopefully you'll become a regular as a co-host. Thank you again, dear. Okay, can I say the definition of the self-discipline? Oh, yes, yes, yes. I'm sorry. I, I thought you were finished. Absolutely. Go ahead. Self-discipline is the most important single quality for success in life and in becoming a self-made millionaire. If you can discipline yourself to do what you should do, when you should do it, whether you feel it or not, your success is virtually guaranteed. And I'm going to add something to that, if I may. Okay. It's not only doing what you should do, even when you don't feel like doing it. He said, Brian Tracy said something. I, I'm not going to be able to repeat his words exactly. But it's to do things as if someone is watching, but knowing no one is watching. Does that make sense? To do yeah, things... Yeah as if someone is watching, knowing that the results will pay off big time. So thank you, thank you, thank you for that. Thank you. Anything else you wanted to contribute at this point? Done. Done. Done? <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you again. Very, very okay. much. Thank you. So uh, on... You know, I, I love Mr. Google, and I, and I have such fun finding the appropriate images because I really believe that people learn more if you can utilize all the senses, so the auditory, the visual, instead of just one or the other. And I found this image, always do your best. What you plant now, you will harvest later. So even though we take baby steps, that's part of learning. Um, nothing happens overnight. And I remember growing up and my father, who I adored and worshipped, uh, used to say, a day should not go by when you don't learn something new. So you really have to commit. And I think it was Jim Rohn who has been attributed um, to the statement, and somebody might be able to put it in the chat box, that it's who you become in the process. The more you work on yourself, the more success you will have in any business or any profession. So next, I want to introduce a good friend, Mark Barman from California. And he grew up in the freezing cold um, uh, in the Chicago Midwest area and is a really, really smart guy. Um, graduated MIT and graduate school at Stanford, and he's been in the Silicon Valley for most of his career. And um, he was first exposed to network marketing in the 90s, and he did a toughie. He was with Amway. And, um, you know, it's amazing that Amway is I would think the grandfather of our profession. I don't know, I think over 50 years old. And from what I understand, um, their payout approximately is about 17 to 22% compared to Zango's true 50%. And that Amway last year, after decades, grew by $2 billion. Isn't that amazing? Now, um, he he is very much into the law of attraction, and um, and Zango obviously has become a, a part of his future. And I love this photo, Mark, with your Rush T-shirt. And I would love everybody to to post on Facebook their Rush T-shirt as well. But of course, with them in it. <laughs> so, Mark, I'm going to turn it over to you because I know you've got some terrific insights that you got also from session three and session uh, four, both the quantum leaps in your career as well as time empowerment. So I'm going to mute myself out and turn it over to you. Thanks, Andy. Yeah, I had a great fun taking that picture. I, I had to make sure that I didn't get too bright a reflection off that bald head. But uh, it, uh, it was a lot of fun taking the picture. I'm sure looking forward to the, uh, to the conference. Well, um, 
I'm getting so much out of these uh, Brian Tracy tapes. It, it's just amazing. Uh, I uh, want to mention, you know, I've I've really made I've really recommitted myself to uh, to personal growth. I mean, there was a lot of growth back in the '90s, as, uh, as Sandy told you, and then I kind of uh, got away from things for a while. Uh, stuff happened in life. So uh, I've been coming back from that, and boy, in, in the last years we've been going through uh, the mastermind groups. I've, I've really seen a big difference, uh, and I'm looking forward to lots more of that in, uh, in the lifelong learning process. Well, looking at uh, listening to what what Brian is saying, there were a couple things that really stuck out for me, um, and and so I, I'm not going to cover absolutely everything he said. There's a lot. I know you're like the ten things you can do to accelerate your success and things like that. But but one of the first things he mentioned was the 80-20 rule, uh, where 20% of, of if you'll take 20% of the time at the beginning of the task and figure out. Um, how do you need to go and approach the task? And what tools you have available, and maybe maybe what tools or methods you need to use? And that'll that'll account for getting 80% of your of your success right there, right up front. So you'll be able to to prepave the whole thing right up front um, if you take that time. That that really um, pulled me back to what when we were looking at uh, the law of attraction and uh, Asking it is given what Abraham talked about in terms of pre-paving and achieving vibrational alignment. Uh, and it also dovetails with what people have told me about uh, visualization, that if you'll, if you'll get that vibrational alignment, if you visualize your success, you know, it's, it's an accomplished thing, and, and you'll see yourself as having done that already, and now what are the steps that I took to get there? Uh, that goes... That goes toward 80% of your success right there in the, in the opening uh, few moments. So uh, that was a, a big realization. Um, I like his definition that happiness is a progressive step by step. Sorry, progressive step by step movement towards a goal. I really like that that definition. And I've heard that is his progress, but here is what happiness is. You know, I mean, happiness is not the end result. Uh, it, it, it really is the uh, the journey. The joy is in the journey, and that that, that encapsulates it. Um, Brian emphasized you must network continuously to broaden your contacts because everything is people. And your success will totally be decided by the number of people you know uh, and who know you in a favorable way and, and are willing to work with you and trust you and you know, can can help key you into how things can be done. Uh, suggest things to you, and and uh, that trade-off of, uh, of of ideas and that trade-off of uh, helping each other. That uh, networking is such a wonderful uh, mechanism to accomplish. Um, he he made a definition: efficiency is doing things right, but effectiveness is doing the right thing. And what a point that is. You know, it doesn't matter how efficient you are if you're not doing the right thing. So you have to figure out what are the right things to do and then be efficient in how you go about doing it. Um, the next thing that really struck me is, is that when you talk and act like a successful person, then people will perceive you as a, as a successful person. You know, so, so this is where... The confidence comes from because you know you're moving down a path, and in our case, we know it's a path. We have we have mentors who are showing us how they succeeded, and we're duplicating that path. And so we know that the success is there if we can duplicate and follow that path. So we can talk and we can act like a successful person. We can talk and act like the successful people we are going to be. Um. And people will perceive that and want to go down that path with us. And uh, that's really how, how leaders are, are born and how leaders grow. Uh, then there's this wonderful positive feedback loop. Uh, the higher your self-esteem, the more you will discipline yourself. The more that you discipline yourself, the more that you will persist in accomplishing your goal. The more that you persist, the more that you succeed, 
And the more that you succeed, the more you will like yourself. The more that you like yourself, the higher your self-esteem. And so it's an upward spiral, an upward spiral in a positive feedback loop. I just thought it was a delightful observation. Uh, the, uh, the fourth session, time empowerment. The first point he made that really struck me was that working on high value, important things that are moving you rapidly toward your goal gives you a, a positive endorphin rush, gives you a hit. You get excited. You know, when, when you see that you're working on something that's of value to you and you're making progress, you get excited. So if you, if you do important things that you enjoy doing together with people you enjoy doing them with, things that you're staying with until you're done, and every time you engage with them, you'll enjoy them. You know, like, uh, like they say, times, like Kermit the Frog says, time's fun when you're having flies. Um, Brian talks about how your ability to trade your time well is what determines the quality of your life. You know, the, the more effective and more efficient you are with your time, and the better quality of life you'll have. And the more you can leverage your time through, through the people that you're leading and the people that you're following, uh, the better quality of life everyone will have. The best investment of your time and money is to increase your learning ability. And boy, isn't that what we're doing here tonight? Uh, that could that commitment to lifelong learning. It really impacted me. He, Brian said the biggest waste of time, three of them. One, staying in a dead-end job. Two, staying in a dead-end relationship. And three, continuously underperforming your income ability. Uh, so, you know, if you're unhappy, then uh, it's very likely to be one of those three. Finally, uh, Brian touched on Pareto's law. Uh, this, this is a law that uh, a lot of us technologists know about and behavioral scientists know about. It's the 80-20 rule. Um, and the way Brian applied it that I thought was great, he said it, in making your business work, you need to spend 80% of your time creating your new customers and 20% of time maintaining your current ones. The current ones. So 80 20. Uh, and as soon as you're not spending time getting new customers in, you, you build, your business ceases to grow, and if it's not growing, it's decaying. So 80% of the time creating new customers, 20% of the time maintaining current ones. And the insight that I had from other readings I've had is those current customers that, that you're going to be spending the 20% of your time on. You want to focus on the 20% of them that are producing 80% of your income. So that will help you use that 20% of, of your time most efficiently. So you want to plan your activities, enough of the necessary ones to achieve your goals. And uh, those are the things I got out of the, uh, the time environment. Thanks very much. Sandy, back to you. Thank you. Just had to unmute myself. Thank you. And I just loved all the the bullet points that that really hit home for you. And, and if I could comment on some of them, because I think this is my big aha, especially with the time management piece that, that Brian talked about, was that his audience were not people in network marketing or multi-level marketing. They were traditional business people. So for me, the aha was this is universal law. This has nothing to do with our unique niche of a home-based business. So think about this. Spending 80% of your time creating new customers. How many in Zanga, if you've been in for a week or a month and you've got one or two people on the team or you've been in like us, for 12 years and have tens of thousands of people on the team, we still have to spend 80% of our time looking and creating new customers and new business partners and only 20% of the time in management. To me, that was like, oh my goodness. And he's not even talking about our profession. And I'll share with you something. You know, when we were running our businesses, I, there were days I was, 
like a chicken without a head. I mean, you know, the major hospitals were our accounts. We had six trucks on the street. Everybody came to me with their problems because they didn't know how to solve them. And so I, I decided, I mean, I had to, to take a course in time management. And I paid buku bucks to go to Temple University to take a course in time management. And most of it, of course, I don't remember, except I walked away with two things. One was they taught me to put the monkey back on somebody else's back. Tell them what to do and let them solve the problem. The other was that they actually had me do a time log, almost like a work activity log that CPAs and attorneys use. So they had me log in on a sheet every 15 minutes what I was doing to see where the interruptions were, where in fact I was committed to doing the high priority, most difficult tasks first thing in the day so that the rest of the day seemed easy. So think about it. How many days do you wake up and you've got your to-do list and if you're like me, you've got them on the phone, you've got them on the computer, you've got them in a notebook, you've got three or four different places where you know what you're supposed to be doing every 30 minutes or every hour on the hour that you are awake and breathing. And how many of you commit to doing the toughest chicken list things first? The thing that you've been avoiding, the call that you've been avoiding, the task that you've been avoiding, I challenge you for the next 21 days, because we know how many days it takes to change a habit. Everybody put in the chat box, how many days does it take to change a habit? And you better know this answer, otherwise you can call my six-year-old grandson and he can tell you, that's right, 21 days. So for 21 days, I want you to wake up and do your most difficult, challenging, sweating task first. So the rest of the day just seems to breathe by. And I know you mentioned the teachings of Abraham, Mark, and we're both students of Abraham hyphen Hicks. And I think that book that you referenced, Ask and it is given. It's in the university. It's in Angola University under the ebook. To me, oh my goodness, for me, that changed the direction of a downward spiral with total devastation to prosperity. And there's a section in the book, um, and I don't even remember the chapter, but it talks about. Um, 17 seconds, holding a feeling for 17 seconds. And, you know, if you can squeeze into your crazy schedule, you know, just 20 pages a day, because what I also got from uh, Brian Tracy's sessions this month is that leaders are not born, they're made. And we all know that leaders are readers. In fact, uh, Joe Morton and um, Ryan Anderson and uh, we're at our home last Wednesday, and they walked upstairs to our offices. And his comment was, wow, you've got quite the library. And it was funny because Sunday, Eddie and I had to go out and buy more bookcases because between, you know, the um, CDs and the DVDs and all the audio books and all the regular books, we had to go buy another set of bookshelves. Um, so, Mark, again, we so appreciate your contribution and for stepping up and really leading by example. Now, um, a lot of thank people you. may ask, I'm sorry, go ahead, Mark. It's a thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. <laughs> Everybody say thank you, thank you, thank you to, to Mark as well. And, you know, some of the speakers asked me, you know, well, what's the format and who's going to talk about what? And the, here's my theory. I know if I listen to an audio tape and I will re-listen to that audio tape a second or a third or a tenth time, every time I listen to it, I hear something different. I remember something different. So here is my thinking with these mastermind calls. We're, we are all listening to the same content. We're all listening to
to the same material. But each one of us is hearing something different. And when we hear from Michaela and we hear from Mark and we hear from Rick and, and I'm even going to do a summary, repetition is magical. And sometimes someone will say something, oh, yeah, yeah, I remembered them, them saying that. That's something I want to write down. And you should really be having a separate spiral notebook. Um, I call mine my pearls, P-E-A-R-L, my pearls, of really outstanding thoughts or sayings that I don't want to forget. So I write them down so I know where I can access them and find them. So in, in part of Brian's teachings this month, he talks about our actions and also our inaction. And there are always consequences for what we do or for what we do not do. And it's really, really important to remember that it's really easy not to do things. It's always easy not to do something and, and find an excuse. It's really easy. It's tough, as Michaela said, to be self-disciplined, especially when no one's watching. So there's always this cause and there's an effect. So even when you don't feel like... Yeah, I'll give you an example. We had a pest guy, a new pest guy that comes to do pest control once a month at the house. And he was a new guy. The old guy got a different territory. And I really was exhausted that day. I didn't really want to have a conversation. But I knew I had to because I live by the mantra, never leave a situation without making something happen. So I started the conversation. How old are you? What have you, you know, how long have you been working for the company? What did you do before? Do so you or any of your friends drink energy drinks? So one thing led to another. And we started talking about the MB30 movement. Well, guess what? He is now one of my key candidates that I believe is coming in. But look what might have happened if I chose to say, I'm too tired. I'm, I'm just exhausted. I don't want to have a conversation. I'm not going to take action. So always remember there is a consequence for your activity or your non-activity. So our next co-host is a dear, dear friend for a long time. And oh, I, the smile, and he is just, he is just like his smile, Rick Dawson. And I want you to notice something about all the people in Zango. Who do we attract? We attract some really high caliber people, people with master's degree, people with graduate degrees, people who work for, like Rick, um, Ber Berkshire Hathaway, which is Warren Buffett's company. For 25 years he was with that company. I mean, think about that the quality of the, the people that we consider not just friends, but business partners. And, of course, he lives in minus two zero uh, Cleveland, and he's been with Zango now um, um, for several years. And um, his, his son, I, I must share Nicholas's story because uh, his son, Nick, had Crohn's disease. And the kid was young and so, so sick. And just three months on Zango Juice, his son was symptom-free and off all drugs. Now, we cannot say that Zango cures anything. But I can tell you, Nick suffered terribly from Crohn's disease. And now he doesn't. And I, I think we all have to say thank you, thank you, thank you to Rick because he was the one that found Brian Tracy's workbook for us to fill in the blanks. Oh, my God, it makes our going through these sessions a absolute breeze. So thank you, thank you, Rick, for finding that workbook. And tonight, um, Rick is going to share with us a couple things. Um, he was really impressed with the 10 things to accelerate your business. And then he's got something bonus at the end. So Rick, I'm going to put myself on mute and turn it over to you, my friend. 
All right. Thank you so much, Sandy, and good evening, everyone, from freezing Cleveland, Ohio. Um, yeah, as Sandy mentioned, we are at minus two degrees, and I believe with the wind chill, it's like negative 20. Um, so it's it's a, a frozen tundra outside, but on inside, things are heating up, and we are excited. Uh, really, really excited to share with you tonight about uh, Brian Tracy's quantum leap in um, taking quantum leaps in your sales and business career. And the first thing that I wanted to talk about were the 10 things that you can do to accelerate your success in your career. Uh, really, he talks about getting on the fast track. Uh, number one is education. He says, we live in a knowledge-based society where the highest paid people are those who know more than others. He says, to earn more, you must learn more. And he said something really interesting. I'd never heard this before, but he said for each year of education, that equates to $200,000 more in income over the span of your life. So just think about that. And he also, uh, which made me feel a little bit better, uh, he said that um, it's not necessarily the college degree or you know the master's degree or the PhD. It's all of the different learning opportunities that you take, reading books, listening to CDs, taking classes, being in on these, these mastermind calls. All of that stuff equates to more money in the bank over time. Um, then he talked about skill. Number two is skill. Your level of ability in your field will determine the quality and quantity of your results. It's not the will to win, but the will to prepare to win that counts. And he also said when you make a goal, attach it to a learning object to help you make that goal, which I thought was really great. Number three is contacts. Everything is people. Your success will be decided by the number of people you know in a favorable way. He says you must network continuously to broaden your contacts. And he, he gave a really great way to network to people. He said <clears throat> just to go up to someone and say, so tell me what you do. And he let him talk. And then say, so tell me what do I need to know about you to recommend clients to you? And that little tidbit right there will turn people around and make them much more comfortable, much more willing to tell you about themselves because they know that there's a, a benefit, a gain to that. A great way to network with people, and I'm definitely going to try that. I network a lot. Uh, anywhere I go, I'm talking to people and trying to meet people. And so if I can turn it around on them and get them talking, that's always a great thing. Um, number four is money. You know, money gives you freedom and the ability to take advantage of opportunities. If you cannot save money, the seeds of greatness are not in you. And that is so true. It's, it's all back to discipline again. You know, when we do start seeing some money coming in this business, the first thing we want to do is spend it. But the last thing you want to do is spend it. You want to save it. You want to grow and invest and, and get, you know, live the life of your dreams. And if you're blowing up at all as fast as you're making it, you're never going to have anything long term. And I think that's what he was really trying to drive home. Number five is good work habits. As, uh, as Mark mentioned before, efficiency is doing things right while effectiveness is doing the right things. What is most valuable, what, I'm sorry, he says, what is, what is the most valuable use of my time right now? Thinking about that. Uh, he says to get a reputation of being a hard worker because that makes you indispensable. And I think not only if you have a J-O-B, but in your network marketing business, it's all about reputation. It's all about your image. It's about being a leader and being known as being a leader. You know, when you're recruiting people into this business and you are, are letting them put their trust in you, then you want to make sure that your reputation is, I am going to go to work for you. I'm going to help you in any way, shape, or form to have the success that you desire because you are, are giving me the trust as a leader. So just think about that. It is so, so important. Then he also talks about a positive attitude. And I think this is, uh, this is something that you know, we've conveyed to our children over the years. We have three kids, and we've always talked about having an attitude of gratitude keeping a positive attitude, um, you know, letting it roll off your back when things are not going your way. Uh, he says, the ability to remain confident and optimistic in the face of daily ups and downs is so important. Be cheerful. The quality 
of your personality is largely determined by the way you explain things to yourself. Brush it off. Keep on going. Don't worry about it. Don't let a bad day or a bad, I'm sorry, a bad mood ruin your entire day. Um, then he talks about image. And he says 95% of your first impression is in your clothes, which I thought was really interesting. Um, he says image is the way that you appear to others. People tend to judge you by the way you look on the outside. Of course, you never get a second chance to make a good first impression. Number eight is creativity. Continually looking for better, faster, easier, cheaper ways to get the job done. One good idea is all you need to start a fortune. And boy, don't we know that with Zango. You know, our founders had an idea. And they took that idea and they got really creative with it. And they went to work and they built a destiny. Uh, number nine, character. Self-discipline, again, combined with honesty, will open countless doors for you. Persistence is self-discipline in action. And finally, number 10 is luck. Being in the right place with the right resources at the right time, you tend to attract into your life the people, ideas, and circumstances in harmony with your dominant thoughts. Again, it's the law of attraction. So powerful because you are where your thoughts are. And then finally, uh, you know, Sandy and I were chatting earlier, and, um, you know, at the end of uh, last month's session, we talked about uh, little Jessica and, uh, you know, doing those positive daily affirmations, uh, you know, and <laughs> it was just so cute seeing her and, and the passion that she had uh, when she said, I like myself, I like myself, and just, it was just so moving to see that. And, um, you know, one thing that we wanted to do is to give you something else for this month to practice. Um, a number of years ago, I was fortunate enough to be a student of the great Tony Robbins. Um, Tony totally changed my life in a positive way. And one of the things that I learned a long time ago, I would love to share with all of you right now, uh, is something that he uses quite a bit. He calls it, now I am the voice. And, you know, if you think about all the different things that are negative in the world, people telling you you can't do it, those little thoughts of doubt that creep into your head uh, telling you that you can't accomplish something, you know, all those negative influences. Well, you know, Tony encourages people to just break free from all of that. You be the voice. You're in charge of your destiny. You are the one that can make or break it. And so one of the things that I wanted to share right now is his Now I Am the Voice. And this is something that I've said many, many times over the years. Uh, it's a daily affirmation that I, I encourage all of you to, to use. And I will, uh, I will put a link to this uh, in the, ch uh, the chat box as well so that you have it. But it is, Now I Am the Voice. I will lead, not follow. I will believe, not doubt. I will create, not destroy. I am a force for good. I am a force for God. I am a leader. Defy the odds. Set a new standard. Step up. Step up. Step up. I can't tell you how much that has influenced me and impacted my life in a positive way by saying those words over and over and over again. I can say it in my sleep. Um, take the opportunity this month to say those words every single day. Look at yourself in the mirror and say it with passion and you will be amazed at how your attitude changes. Start your day after, after you do what Sandy's talking about by doing the thing that you dread the most. Get in front of the mirror and say those words and watch what happens to your life. Thank you so much. Awesome, Rick. Just awesome. So here's our assignment, guys. Uh, I put in the, jack, the um, chat box our Facebook group. And Rick will do as he said. And uh, he's going to put in the Facebook group um, the, uh, the affirmation, now I am the voice, so that we can all confirm that we got it. Now, Rick just put in a YouTube uh, link, which I assume is Tony Robbins. Is that correct, Rick? Yes, it is. Okay, 
Awesome. And if you could put that in our Facebook group as well, that would be absolutely amazing. So please, everyone, say great job, Rick. I mean, it, it's amazing what Rick has been bringing to the calls. And I want to comment a little bit because you referenced about the ups and downs and the challenges of life. And there's a book written by Dr. Scott Peck called The Road Less Traveled. It was really something that was gifted to me 21 years ago when we were financially devastated. And the first chapter, it might have even been the first page, he states that life is difficult. So knowing that there are ups and downs in life, the key is how do you handle them? What do you do to overcome them? And what lessons are you going to learn so you do not allow history to repeat itself? But everybody's got challenges, some more than others. But when you also read Esther Hicks, Ask and It Is Given, she claims we create where we are. And life is about the choices we've made. So every day when you wake up, it's a new day. That's why they call it the present. It's a gift. And you can change your future. So I, w I wanted to make comments on that. I also wanted to comment on what's coming March 3rd with Zanga, which is a whole new program. And I got to tell you, if you ha were not on our preliminary call last night, Wednesday night, with Ryan Anderson as he presented, and they, they did have some technical difficulties because they used GoToWebinar, which hates Apple and Mac products. I mean, GoToWebinar, you know, if you don't use a PC, forget it. Your keynote presentation just will not show. And they, they actually didn't know that. And, then, you know, Ryan probably could have converted it to a PowerPoint and it would have been okay. So we are replaying um, the, uh, the session on Saturday morning at 9 a.m. for our faculty call. So don't miss that. But the new program that we're launching, and think about the day, March the 3rd, 3-3, three, three, we're launching the power of three. And we are going to have a track to run on to get you or a brand new partner into the money quickly that within the first 30 to 40 days, to at least $240 a month, the second month to 665, and the third month to 660, the third month to 1400, so 240 the first month, 665 the second, 1400 the third month, if you do what we are teaching. Now, I know people are probably, some people are gonna say, oh, you know, to make $240 a month, you know, it, it's no big deal. You know, I hear on the internet I can make $10,000 my first day or my first 30 days. Now, come on, guys. You know, I know you just still don't believe in the tooth fairy and, you know, nobody's going to drop 10 grand in your lap in 30 days. I mean, that's all hype. It's all lies. It, to me, it's criminal. But if you are willing to do what we teach, and there's some exciting presentations that are going to be available to get the job done. I want you to put things in perspective. I have a very, very dear friend who has, you ready for this, a million dollars in the bank, in the bank, a million dollars in cash, okay? Now, knowing today's economic situation and what the banks give you for an ROI, return on investment, in the chat window, guess how much money she earns every month on that million dollars of cash in the bank. I don't see anybody putting any numbers in there. What do you think it is? What do you think her return on investment uh, monthly, monthly is in dollars, how much she gets every single month with a million dollars in the bank? Okay, we got some people that are close. I'm gonna give you the answer, okay? $283 a month, $283 a month with a million dollars in the bank. So here's my thought. Oh my goodness. 
if we can get people to even $300 a month, that exceeds having a million dollars in the bank. And if we can get people to $600 a month, that's like having $2 million in the bank. I don't know about you, but I don't know many people. I mean, I, I do have some very wealthy friends who obviously have a lot more than that. But I'm talking, you know, your average family who can, you know, what is the average income, I think Brian said, about $60,000 a year with, with both husband and wife working. I mean, something ridiculous. You know, how are they going to ever prepare for retirement? So I want you to keep that in mind. Okay, if we can get people to $300 a month in recurring income, that's like having a million dollars in the bank. Let's celebrate and let's do it quickly. So now what I'd like to do is share my little thoughts about, um, in summary, what I got out of Brian Tracy because I have to tell you it takes, I know how long it takes, it's going to take you a couple hours to listen to this stuff. And what's nice about the audios, you can put them on your iPhone or your smart device and you can listen to them in the car while you're driving. But, you know, I, here, here's my take on what I, I listened to this month. Life is always about choices. And we have two choices. Do you want to take the high road or do you want to take the low road? It's your choice. It's, it's not your spouse. It's not your family. It's you. It's not your upline. It's not your downline. It's you. You've got to make that choice. Two roads to take, the high road or the low road. And I know probably the theme of, of this, these sessions was self-discipline. I, I think decision, another D word, and self-discipline is doing what needs to be done when it needs to be done, even when you don't feel like doing it, and even when no one is watching. So write that down, self-discipline. Make sure you've made a choice. Are you taking the high road or the low road? That should not be really a choice. And I love this session, and Rick talked about it. Think about when you meet people. And you're asking questions. What do you do? How long have you done it? How can I serve you? Uh, I consider myself a person of service. What would I need to know about you so that I could recommend you to people I know? Think about that. People are going to be blown away because most people, when you meet them, they just want to know what you can do for them, not what you get the whole point. Really, really important. Now, Earl Nightingale. I remember listening to my first Earl Nightingale tape, 1977. I'm giving away my age and probably before most of you were born. But I remember listening to that audio cassette tape. And I subscribed to his tape of the month. And the very first tape that I listened to, he said something that I will never forget. He said, if you are listening to this tape, you are already part of the 5% who are already successful. He said, you're probably striving for even getting better. Isn't it sad that people who need to listen to this do not? So, Remember, the more you listen, the more you read, the more you grow. Now, when, when I went into business, 1978, um, our industry was male-dominated, and we were competing against major, major, multi-gazillion-dollar companies, public companies. And here I am, a woman, um, trying to compete in that space. Uh, in the medical and surgical supply business. And um, I bought some books on dressing for success because, I mean, I was voted best dressed in high school, but that's still not what I needed to know. And you need to know you have four seconds, not a minute, but four seconds to make a good first impression. 
and I'll share with you what I learned so many decades ago, what people look at for their first four seconds. They look at your shoes. And I don't care if you only have one pair of good shoes, make sure they go to the shoemaker. Make sure they are polished. Make sure they don't look scuffed, especially women in heels. When they drive, they get the back of the heel scuffed. Shoes. The second thing I learned, your briefcase, your handbag, your leather goods, the belt that you wear may sound silly, but remember, you've got four seconds to make a good first impression. What about your business card? You know, it's interesting. Um, we have a guy now that we're working with for some IT stuff, and uh, I looked at his business card, and I said, Dad, there's no way I'm going to use this guy. And he said, but why, Sandy? He's, he's really good. And I said, Eddie, did you look at his business card? It was made on his computer. I mean, I was like appalled. And after I looked at all his work, and he's a friend of Ed's, I said to him, I said, I got to be honest with you. If your first impression was your business card, I would not be doing business with you. But because Ed knows you and because we looked at your work, we are going to do business with you. And he came over to the house, I think it was Thursday, with his new business card that is absolutely drop-dead gorgeous. It's the shape of a leaf, and it's got, it's got images, under images. I said, now, that is something that's impressive. And he says, I owe it to you, Sandy. You embarrassed me. It's like a shoemaker with no shoes. I couldn't believe that the business card really does make that first impression. So lessons learned. And I know we have a, a lot of, Gen Y generation who who live, I mean, you know, we were watching some sort of show on TV the other night, comedian, some comedy show, and the guy was wearing like work boots and cut jeans, and I said to Eddie, I said, he looks like he just fell off a truck, a work truck. Can you believe he's, he's in a stand-up comedy club? I mean, it, it's, to me, it's pathetic what has happened. To, to people when they're trying to make a good impression. So use good judgment and always smile, smile, smile. So I, I had to put my two cents about dressing for success. Now, the Pareto principle. I mean, this has been around since <laughs> all of us were born, since the, before the you know, 1920s, and it hasn't changed. The 80-20 rule about everything, and it is the secret to success. So where are you spending the majority of your time? Are they on the income-producing activities? So you got to write down, and you really need to do this. I want you to commit before the week is out a list of what for you are income-producing activities. And we have a Facebook group. Please, please share it, what you think your income-producing activities are. And sadly, it's not being on this webinar. It's not attending sessions. It's not reading. It's not listening to Steve. What creates income for you. Now, I know the answer, but I'm not going to tell my answer. I want to hear your answer. So make sure to post it in our Facebook group and share it with everyone. So we have an action item to do. We all know how many days it takes to change a habit. And Rick has given you an assignment. Now I am the voice daily. And I want everyone to post in the Facebook group that they did, now I am the voice. Just, you can copy, but I did, now I am the voice. I did it today. I did it today. And I want you to also make a public commitment on your progress, that you're going to jot down the most important income producing activities. And you're going to pick one. You're just going to pick one income-producing activity and commit to that every single day 
for 21 days. And, you know, I found this image that I had to share with you because we think what we do in Zango is unique and different than what other people do in the workplace. And it's not. You know, who are we looking for? We're looking for people who want shortcuts to better health or shortcuts to better finances. So no different than any other salesperson out there, even though we hate to say, oh, we don't do sales, we share baloney. We are salespeople. We are salespeople looking for those few who want freedom. That's what we're looking for. We're selling freedom. We're not selling Zango products. We sell freedom. Can you put that in the chat box? We sell freedom. That's what we sell. The side effect is you'll look younger, you'll live longer, healthier, but we sell freedom. So when you meet someone, they're not aware of what you do. Your goal is to establish some sort of interest and identify a problem. What is their problem? Are they not well? Is, there, are there, is their bank account tragically ill? Are they looking for a solution? Are they looking for a solution to get them freedom and peace of mind? Does that make sense? And why should they choose you, quite honestly, you know, when there are so many other options out there? You want them to choose you for all the right reasons. So become the person that you need to become to attract people. Now, this next slide, I mean, I just went crazy because it's what we do. And Brian's audience are traditional businesses, the three key activities he talked about to prospect, present, and follow up. This is a no-brainer, guys. Prospect, present, and follow up. And where is the majority of your time spent? Prospecting, duh. This is what we're supposed to do. And then let the tools be the messenger. Send them the links to a gift from us. And I hope you've seen the new website a gift from us, forward slash best day ever, and it'll officially launch, I think, on Saturday, but you could go take a peek now. But 80% of your time is prospecting. Your presenting is not you. It's the tool. It's the doctor. And Zango, within about 60 to 90 days, will be launching a phenomenal professional video that with actors and all that that's going to state how you can have the best day of your life. And remember, only 20%, 20% is spent on following up and managing. And if you've been a part of my power system, the uh, auto responders have been dripping on your people forever. And uh, the new system will also have auto responders as well. But only 20% of your time should be managing your team, Re even for me. 80% of my time is on prospecting now. So just remember that. Now, we have heard this forever, the Harvard MBA study. I mean, there is no one in network marketing who has not heard this. So if your goals are not written down, written down, not in your head, it's only a dream. It's nonsense. It'll probably never happen happen. So it's a new year. Did you write down new goals on a sheet of paper? Uh, in earlier sessions with Brian, he really said that you should write your goals every morning, every morning, not just read them, but rewrite them. There's something about putting pen to paper. And I got this from Abraham as well. Um, so you should have written down your three month written goals, six month, 12 month goals, how many new customers you want to have in three months, how many new business partners you want to have in three, six, 12 months, and what are you willing to do to get it? Because it's not enough to write it down. You have to be self-disciplined and be sure 
you either get up an hour earlier or go to bed an hour later or work during your lunch break, but you've got to find the time to do this because there are serious, serious tax advantages by spending seven hours a week on your business and documenting it because you can put back in your pocket somewhere between three and $500 every single month with tax advantages just like the Bill Gates and the Michael Dells and the Sam Waltons of the world. But if you quit Zango or you don't do your seven hours a week, then you're not entitled to the tax benefit. Now, why would you not want to put back three to $500 back in your pocket every single month? If, if you don't have an answer to that, you probably could not fog a mirror. So I hope everybody on this call listening can at least fog a mirror, right? So we're committed. We're committed to continuous learning. Learning never stops. It goes on forever, even when you get to 20K and Premier and 200K and 500K. The learning never stops stops if you want to live life as it should be. So how do you do that? The books, the workshops, the website, the webinars, the coaching, convention. Ah, speaking of Rush Convention, and um, uh, Mark was wearing that great t-shirt about the convention that's happening here in Las Vegas in September. So if you need a Rush ticket, and remember, events are not negotiable. You shouldn't even be on this call if you're not going. In fact, I should not allow anybody on the call if they're not coming to convention. So if you need a ticket, you can go to Zango.com. They're now $129. However, Eddie and I bought a block of tickets that are only $49. Now, I only have a limited amount. So if you want to grab a ticket while I still have it at $49 instead of $129, which is what it is right now, uh, email me right away at Sandy with an I at SandyAndEd.com. So if you don't already have a ticket and if you prefer to spend $49 instead of $129, duh, uh, make sure you secure a ticket from us as soon as possible. So. In closing, you will resolve. You are now the voice. You are going to resolve. You are going to decide firmly on your course of action. I'm not going to push you. I'm not going to pull you. And nobody is watching, right? So, and yes, Rick, uh, Robert Kiyosaki is our keynote speaker. And when you make flight um, arrangements, don't forget to save Sunday for the event after the event with our Zango University. So we will be having an all-day training on skill building on Sunday after convention. So uh, resolve to your new life resolution because life is about choices. And of course, commit to reading at least 20 pages a day. 20 pages a day. Now, what I do, I keep a book in my gym bag. I keep a book on my nightstand. I keep a book in the bathroom. <laughs> and you also must commit in your car to listen to audios, to listen to CDs, to download the stuff from XU onto your smartphone and commit, even on short trips, if it's just, even if it's just 10 minutes to the supermarket, because for us it's 20 minutes, but even just whatever short trips, just always have those audios playing and turn your vehicle into a university on reels and commit that you're not going to turn on the radio till you're at least a 20K or if you're already a 20K until you get to your next goal rank. And remember this, and Rick talked about luck. What is luck? And I believe it's Gordon Morton, uh, one of our dear, beloved founders, that has always said this. Luck is when preparation meets opportunity. Luck is when preparation, and I just realized preparation, I think is spelled wrong. 
um, preparation meets opportunity. And I'm going to quote Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson stated, the harder I work, the luckier I get. The harder I work, the luckier I get. So we are on a path of growth. And you are going to attract into your life whatever you give attention to, energy and focus, whether positive or negative. And this is the law of attraction. You get what you think about. You get what you emotionally feel. And that's the difference when Abraham teaches. It's not just what you think about. It's what you think about with emotion, with feeling. And my quote is, now let me get it straight, you are where your thoughts are. And you better be writing this down. You are where your thoughts are. Make sure your thoughts are where you want to be. Rick, if you'll write that down and post it in the Facebook group, that would be great. You are where your thoughts are. Make sure your thoughts are where you want to be. So my friends, my business partners, I adore you. I want to applaud your success. So make a decision. It's another D word like discipline. Decide. Once and for all, you are going to have an extraordinary life. And we're just going to play a small part in getting you where you want to be. So thank you all for attending our session. I know we ran a little over tonight, but these mastermind calls are not limited because we want people to contribute. So reach out to us on the Facebook group who would like to participate in March. And I'll send out the assignment uh, the, the, the last uh, week of this month. But of course, you can always go to Zango University and uh, get a head start on listening to the next two sessions with Brian Tracy and develop your own personal and professional growth. And with that, we love you all. Bye for now.